Did you hear about the dinosaur who started World War III? Yeah, he just couldn't resist pushing that big red button. In a world where reality frequently outdoes fiction, let's play pretend for a moment and imagine a time where dinosaurs existed during World War III. Picture this. A T-Rex, notoriously known for its short arms, somehow gets its claws on the nuclear launch codes. What could possibly go wrong, right? Let's dive deeper into this absurd scenario. Imagine a T-Rex. Let's call him Rexy, because why not? Rexy is a bit of a daredevil, you see. He's got a taste for danger, a penchant for chaos, and a real knack for getting into places he shouldn't. One day, Rexy stumbles upon the nuclear launch codes. Now I'm not entirely sure how a T-Rex would read nuclear codes given their eyesight is based on movement, but let's not get caught up on the details. The important thing is, Rexy has the codes and a big red button in front of him. What's a dinosaur to do? As we know, T-Rexes aren't particularly known for their restraint and Rexy is no exception. He's got a button, he's got a target, and he's got an itch in his tiny little fingers that just won't go away. Before you know it, there's a bright flash in the sky, and World War III is off to a roaring start. All thanks to our friend Rexy. And you thought your cat knocking over a glass was bad? Imagine a T-Rex with access to nuclear weapons. Now that's a catastrophe of prehistoric proportions. But this isn't just a funny story about a T-Rex with a penchant for chaos. It's a lesson for us all. The moral of the story? Don't give nuclear codes to a T-Rex, or any dinosaur for that matter. They're just not equipped to handle that kind of responsibility. So remember folks, never trust a dinosaur with your nuclear weapons. They're just not responsible enough. But hey, not all dinosaurs are trigger happy. Some might actually be pretty good diplomats. Now let's pause for a moment and consider the Diplodocus, a gentle giant of the Jurassic world. Picture this, a Diplodocus as the UN Secretary General. Imagine those long, verdant corridors of power echoing with the thunderous footfalls of a 75-foot-long dinosaur. That's right, 75 feet. It's like a city bus with a neck. Diplodocus, or Dippy, as we'll affectionately call him, uses his monumental length to his advantage. When things get heated in the Security Council, Dippy can simply crane his neck, peer into the room, and the arguing nations would immediately be reminded that they're being watched over by a creature that could probably use their representative as a toothpick. Talk about a deterrent! Picture Dippy's long neck stretching across the room, his watchful eyes keeping everyone in check. It's like having a living, breathing security camera that also happens to be the boss. And let's not even get started on what happens when someone tries to filibuster. Dippy! with his herbivore patients, could simply outweigh them. But what if a delegate tries to pull a fast one, slip something under the table, figuratively speaking? Well, Dippy just has to lean in a bit, maybe give a low rumble to remind them that he's got eyes on the entire room. That's a level of omniscience only a dinosaur could bring to the table, and let's not forget the power of symbolism here. A diplodocus, a creature from a time before borders, before nations, overseeing the very body that aims to bring those nations together. That's poetry right there. Diplomacy dino style, if you will. With a Diplodocus in charge, we might just have a shot at world peace, or at least a really entertaining UN meeting. And what about air superiority? Forget drones, we've got pterodactyls. Now, I know what you're thinking. Pterodactyls? Really, Ryan? But hear me out. These Jurassic Jokers have been soaring the sky since before the Wright brothers were a twinkle in their great-great-great-grandpappy's eye. Let's start with agility. Have you ever seen a pterodactyl dogfight? No? Well, neither have I. But I can imagine it'd be like watching an aerial ballet, only with more feathers and beaks and the occasional prehistoric screech. They'd pirouette around those modern jets like they were standing still. And when it comes to the element of surprise, these guys could give ninjas a run for their money. They're like the stealth bombers of the Mesozoic era, only more terrifying because, you know, they're actual living, breathing dinosaurs. And let's not forget about their endurance. These prehistoric pilots didn't need pit stops for fuel or in-flight snacks. They could fly for days, maybe even weeks on a single meal. Try beating that, Boeing. Now, you might argue, but Ryan, what about missiles and advanced weaponry? To which I say, 
Have you ever tried to lock onto a target that can change direction faster than a politician's promises? Good luck with that. And finally, let's talk about the intimidation factor. Imagine you're a pilot, minding your own business, when suddenly you see a giant flying reptile in your rear view mirror. I don't know about you, but I'd be out of there faster than you can say extinct. So there you have it, the Pterodactyl Air Force. Agile, enduring, stealthy, and downright terrifying. It's like Top Gun, but instead of Tom Cruise, you've got a bunch of prehistoric birds that could eat Tom Cruise for breakfast. So, in the event of World War III, invest in pterodactyls. They're the future of air combat. Now, let's not forget espionage. Who needs James Bond when you have velociraptors? Indeed, when you think about it, the velociraptor was pretty much the James Bond of the dinosaur world. With their sharp intellect, quick speed, and stealthy nature, they'd put any secret agent to shame. Imagine this. A velociraptor, let's call him Vinny, in a sleek black dinosaur-sized tuxedo sipping on a martini. Shaken, not stirred, of course. Now that's a picture you can't unsee. These cunning creatures were believed to be among the smartest of all dinosaurs. Their intelligence, combined with their agility, made them perfect candidates for the espionage business. Unlike many of their bulkier cousins, they could navigate through dense forests and narrow passages with ease. And their speed, oh boy, they could outrun a cheetah on a good day. And let's not forget about their claws. Those sickle-shaped toe claws were not just for show folks, they were the equivalent of a Swiss army knife. Need to scale a cliff? No problem. Cut through some vines, easy peasy. Take out an enemy? Well, you get the idea. Now let's consider some famous spies in history. Mata Hari, she used her charm and wit to gather intel. But imagine if she had a velociraptor. A few feathers here, a scale there, and voila! Instant disguise. And what about Julius Caesar? His network of spies was legendary. But if he had a squad of velociraptors, he'd have conquered the entire world in no time. And then there's George Washington. He had a pretty impressive spy ring during the Revolutionary War. But if he had a velociraptor, the British would have surrendered after the first tea party. So the next time you're out and about, and you happen to spot a velociraptor lurking in the bushes, don't be alarmed. It's probably just on a top-secret mission from the dinosaur CIA. So next time you see a velociraptor, remember, it might just be spying on you. So, what have we learned today? Well, we've delved into some rather absurd scenarios, haven't we? We've taken a wild romp through the annals of history, or rather an alternate history, where dinosaurs didn't just exist, they were key players in World War III. And let's just say things were a whole lot more exciting. We started with the elephant, or should I say T-Rex, in the room. We imagined a world where instead of tanks, we had triceratops charging into battle, their horns gleaming under the war-torn sky. We pondered the strategic value of a Diplodocus, and let's not forget the diplomacy dino style. Who knew Diplodocus could be so persuasive? Then we took to the skies with the Pterodactyl Air Force. Picture it, squadrons of pterodactyls, wings spread wide, diving and swooping over the battlefield. It certainly gives a whole new meaning to the term air superiority. Next, we delved into the shadowy world of espionage with the Velociraptor spy network. Fast, cunning, and with a knack for blending in, as long as everyone else is a dinosaur, these guys were the ultimate agents of stealth and subterfuge. I mean, who's going to suspect a velociraptor of being a spy? So, there you have it. A world where dinosaurs didn't just roam the Earth, they ruled it and possibly even saved it. It's a world that's as ridiculous as it is fascinating. And while we can't say for certain how the course of World War III would have changed with dinosaurs, we can say it would have been a whole lot more interesting. And that, folks, is why you should always include dinosaurs in your war plans. Because who knows? They just might save the world, or at least make it a lot more interesting.